Hey YouTube, Copersan here. Today we are playing. Ooh, what's this? Today we are training a mechanic all the way from level 1 to level 200. Mechanics are a resistance class that rides a mechanical mount, giving you access to that vast arsenal of weapons that you unlock during your progress through the Maple World. Mechanics are a pirate class and they use decks as their main stat. For level 1 to level 30 you can just keep trading an Eelstein where the mechanics start out. If you go towards the mine you can even pick up some runes at the level 30 plus mobs. That way you can train even faster to level 30. This shouldn't take more than like 2 hours. Seriously though, I can't believe how much this class has changed. I haven't played mechanics since their launch, back in 2011. And this class back then had like flamethrowers and hammers. And now they're all gone. After completing the second job advancement, the mechanic does get a set of new attacking and defensive skills. He attack, he protect, but most importantly, he grinds really fast. Mechanics learn a homing beacon skill at second job, which will help you breeze through most maps with ease. They also learn the perfect armor skill, which is a toggle on off skill. Don't forget to toggle it on every time you log back in, unlike, you know, me. From level 30 to level 60, you can play through Arena Strait, Gold Beach and Fairy Academy team dungeons. They give decent EXP and all the monsters will skill with your level. My character is a little bit stronger due to all the link skills and legion effects that I'm using, so keep this in mind. For link skills, I use the common ones plus most EXP buffs such as Mercedes, Evan and Iron link skills. For the Legion, I put most of my points in EXP, Attack and Dex. And actually, Legion is not a good reason to train more characters, because it unlocks new Legion ranks and so all your characters on that server get stronger. If you really hate these team dungeons, you can also visit for example the end tunnel to defeat some zombie mushrooms. They are around level 50. After reaching level 60, I trained at the Pyrian excavation site. At third job, your mech gets a new mode, which allows you to focus more on single damage, like a tank mode. It will lower the damage from your missiles though, so keep it in mind, it's really only recommended for bossing actually. At level 68, I went to Starry to the Sky 1 in Orbis to grind at his big cute kitties. Make sure to use your teleporter here for maximum clearing efficiency, as this map is a little bit bigger. You also might have noticed that mechanics are not a class that does like a ton of lines, but still the damage is pretty good. You can stay there all the way until you reach around level 80, 82. After that point, I went to Scorpions in Sahel 2, near Magatia. While this map is probably one of the better maps to train in anyway, it works especially well for our mechanical friends. Mobility is one of the things this class is a bit eh in. Like, there is no double jump, there's only this dash. However, the dash is awesome in a way that you can keep using it over and over in the air. So it's not like a double jump where you jump twice and then you just sort of fall down. Mechanics can keep using it, but it does feel a little bit more uh, clunkier in a way. Also, there is a skill that launches you upwards, but this one is also a little bit... It feels just feels clunky, it feels a bit slow. Like, it takes half a second to recover when you land. But besides that, it's okay, but just so you know, the class is not that per se that mobile if you look at the other classes which have double jump, which is probably all classes by now almost. But anyway, this map is perfect because you can just use your dash and your main third jump attacking skill. And it is a bit sad for me, like, I got really attached to my missiles. But they uh, don't do that much damage anymore, like they don't one-shot the mobs anymore. Don't discount those homing beacons though, because they are super useful for bossing later on. So Mechanic has the attack, he has the defense, and now in third job he's also getting a supportive skill, because why the hell not, in the form of a hex unit. This summoned robot heals 8% of nearby party members every now and then, increases elemental and abnormal status resistances, it also lowers the monster's defense, explodes to do even more damage, and at 4 job all party members within range get a 10% final damage increase. So it's pretty cool. At level 91 I went to Zakum with an EXP buff and a rune activated. I gained around 1 level per arm. Mechanics are not that great at bossing, at least not at this stage. Also, I didn't really have a lot of gear, so it took a while to take down the arms. But the Zekum helmet is a welcome drop, and the blue crystals also can be sold for Meso. So I would always recommend to at least try it, you know, you don't lose anything. Alright, so I reached level 100 and we did the 4 job advancement. We go to Blood Harps and Leifre. You will need a total of 5 Star Force for this map, and the monsters are a lot stronger than you're probably used to so far, but the EXP is definitely worth it. Scroll an item with spell traces or scrolls, and then enhance it even more with Star Force. Since the monsters are a bit stronger, you will need all the firepower you can get. Mechanics also get a new main attacking skill, which is a bit of a, a crossover between like Hurricane and the Mule Aquila skill from Phantom. This skill hits multiple monsters in like a straight line. It doesn't have a lot of height, so the monsters need to vertically be on the same height as you to hit them. Oh and by the way, if one of those bounty hunter portals appear, make sure to go into them. Some of them are even better with the rune on. And even if you're wasting some time doing a chicken dance, it's usually worth the EXP. Just look at how much EXP I'm getting from the monsters in this one. 
After reaching level 105, you can start doing Monster Park dungeons as well. Those always give awesome EXP. You can only do two a day for free though. Usually when I reach level 100 plus, I want to start trading at Star Force areas uh, as it's one of the fastest ways to train. I just want to get all these characters to level 200 as fast as possible. So I moved to Mesos and got some new gear. We got some level 150 pants and a level 150 top to go with it. I also got a royal black shoulder, some earrings and a belt all from the same set. I was looking for cheap gear with usually a little bit of dex potential. Nothing worth billions of Mesos or anything like that. I don't really plan to main this character, but I do need to get stronger just to get to level 200. Also, almost no one plays pirates, so guns are like extremely cheap. In future videos, I will show you how you can get gear as well if you have no funding whatsoever, but that's for, a, but that's for a next video. If you're struggling to get masses for now, you can also train at Robos in Lidibrium. If you are Star Force, go to Dual Ghost Pirates, that's the same map I went to in the previous videos. Once you reach level 122, you can also go to Junior Cerebus in the Cave of Trills, which is I think two or three maps before Zakum. This is again a Star Force area, but there is a surprising amount of monsters walking around just waiting to be stomped on by your giant mechanical feet. You can also go to Korean Folktown, which is right of Ludibrium, if you want to avoid Star Force map. Alright, so we reached level 141 and now it's time to get some free levels. The Goblin Night Market event is live in GMS at the time of this video and we're taking full advantage of it. Talk to Fan to get a new skill that will allow you to farm 200 Goblin Coins per day. If you are between level 141 and level 199, you can trade in 100 coins at Duke and Kabi, who will, who will grant you a random amount of levels, usually it's between 1 and 10. First time I used it, I got a freaking 8 levels for free, and the second time another 5 levels. All you need to do is collect 200 coins from monsters around your level and you're good to go. So now we are already level 150 plus, and we went to the hideout in Showa. You can reach Showa through the Mushroom Shrine. Mechanics at this point require a bit more setup due to all the turrets, but their DPS is pretty good even though their skills don't have a lot of damage lines. Well, except for their full map attack, I guess. At this point, I could also finally wear my level 150 gear, so training got a little bit easier. I stayed in this map all the way into level 180 and it went by super fast. At level 181, I went to Knight Stronghold Chamber 3. I dropped all my turrets at the bottom, so I myself could focus on the top two platforms. This area maybe isn't that good EXP wise, but at least runes and bounty hunter portals appear here, so usually it's, it evens out. I also want to show some bossing, so we're taking on Horntail. Normal Horntail actually. I use tank mode and the full spread hyper skill, which gives me like 6 additional missiles. It's great DPS. Tank mode focuses more on the single target, while the missiles do the rest of the work basically. The mechanic mains, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I have this general feeling that mechanics fare a bit better against boss monsters with just like one body part, instead of multiple like Horntail, because they do focus, seem to focus a bit more on like just hitting one mob. And our final levels between level 185 and level 199, we went to big, dark, swollen stumps <laughs> in desolated rocky road in future period. This map has three platforms and it's a little bit smaller than the other ones. Since let people come here, it's like always burning stage 10, which means it's free double XP buff compared to those other maps like the ones where the rocky masks are, that's where most people train. Again, I use my turrets to defeat most of the monsters on the bottom platform. If you place the healing turret just right in the middle, it will reach most of the monsters in the map. You can use your full map attack and distortion field hyper skill to clear monsters on the top part pretty easily or just go up there. After reaching level 199, I wanted to make use of the Goblin Night Market event one more time and use my Dreamy XP to reach level 200. This is now my 9th level 200 character. Also, I want to thank everyone for watching my videos in these difficult times. You're the best. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you next time. Bye bye.